You probably know that different kinds of plants look different, smell different, and taste different from each other. But did you know that some plants do really strange things? Before we look at some really strange plants, let's look at what most plants have in common. One thing plants share is a basic life cycle. Most plants start out as a relatively small seed. In the right conditions, the seed germinates, meaning it begins to grow. It becomes a seedling, then a small plant, then an adult plant. Many adult plants produce flowers. The next stage in the life cycle is reproduction. In many plants, this requires pollination, or the transfer of pollen from one plant to another. After pollination, plants make new seeds. Then, even if the plant dies, new plants grow and the life cycle continues. Plants that make flowers are called, wait for it, flowering plants. Most fruits and vegetables that we eat come from flowering plants. Many trees are flowering plants too. You might think of flowers as small, pretty, sweet-smelling things. If you think this, you probably haven't heard about the Raphalegia plant. Raphalegia grow in the rainforests of Southeast Asia in countries such as Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and the Philippines. Three things make this plant unique. First, it's the largest flowering plant in the world, producing a flower that can be one meter or three feet across. Second, the Raphalegia has no leaves, stems, or roots. Raphalegia lives by attaching itself to a vine and draining water and nutrients from it. The third strange thing about the Raphalegia is its odor. Instead of smelling like perfume, this flower smells like rotten meat. That's how it earned its nickname, the corpse flower. This terrible smell is an important part of Raphalegia's life cycle. The odor attracts flies that land on a flower and carry pollen to another flower. This pollination enables Raphalegia to produce seeds, so more of these flowers can grow. Another plant, the Amazon water lily, also has unusual parts to its life cycle. This giant water lily lives in the Amazon River in South America. The plant begins life as a seed that germinates in the mud at the bottom of the river. The seeds grow into giant round leaves with upturned edges that float on the river's surface. The leaves can be big enough and strong enough to support a small child. Each plant can produce 40 or 50 of these huge leaves. The lily produces flowers, and the flowers produce pollen. Pollination is where things get interesting. These flowers last only two days and open only at night. The first night, the lilies are white and give off a sweet scent that attracts a particular kind of beetle. At night, with beetles inside, the flower closes up. The second night, the flower turns red, loses its scent, and opens up. The pollen-covered beetles can escape. The beetles fly off and carry the pollen to another sweet-smelling white lily. Now, the second lily can produce seeds. These seeds will sink to the bottom of the river and the life cycle will continue. Let's look at the life cycle of a bigger plant, the sandbox tree. This tree grows mostly in the tropical forests of South America. It can grow as tall as a 10-story building. This is not a very friendly-looking tree. The trunk is covered in spikes. The fruit is poisonous to humans. The sap can give you a painful rash. And it has an interesting method of spreading its seeds. Its seed pods dry out and explode. Anyone standing too close would hear a pop and see seeds flying in all directions. But it's best not to stand too close. These seeds can fly at over 100 miles per hour. Moving this fast allows seeds to travel far. This increases the chances of seeds finding a good place to grow in the dense forest. Most plants don't smell rotten, trap beetles, or explode. 
Look at the plants around you. How are they like the three strange plants in this video?